All life originated in water. For evolutionary biologist Axel Meyer, the fish in his research tanks are our relatives. Human relatives, no more, no less. Humans were not dropped off on this planet by aliens. We have an evolutionary history. Until 420 million years ago, we even had a common ancestry with fish. So there's not much of a difference, in principle at least. Axel Meyer uses this link in an extraordinary project which is funded by the Hector Fellow Academy. With his team, he is studying the underlying mechanisms of stress, and fish have the leading role. They are used as substitutes for human beings. Biologist Amber Makovitz is conducting the experiments. The question is, do stressed fish and non-stressed fish differ genetically? Fish exposed to stress are hiding. Stress-free fish swim openly and fearlessly around the aquarium. With this comparison, the researchers can not only trace anxiety behavior to a genetic level, their work could also provide fundamental insights for stress research within the human species. Amazingly, the stress axis found in humans can also be found in fish and is very old in an evolutionary sense. This makes it more easy and more accessible for us. There are the same or homologous genes in fish and in humans. Meyer investigates the effect of stress on fish. His research partner dedicates his work to stress among people, the neuropsychologist Thomas Elbert. For decades, he has been helping patients with traumatic experiences worldwide. Children who have experienced war, for example, and express their stress in drawings like these. In the Hector Fellow Academy project, Thomas Elbert investigates the effects of such extreme experiences together with psychologist Daniela Conrad. This is all blood. That's what he remembers, blood everywhere. He's the only one involved in the scene who puts himself into the picture. Beyond these visible indications, the two really want to know, does stress not only affect the mind, but also cause genetic changes? These drawings allow us to look into the mind, to see what's going on inside this child. And, of course, the question arises, what about the readability of the genetic makeup? How does it correlate? You can identify the correlations in humans, however, cause and effect can never be 100% sure. For this purpose, stress has to be systematically varied. I can't do this with a child. I can't take a school class, torment half of it and let the other half enjoy a good life. However, I can easily do this with fish. For this reason, the team of biologists is investigating the effects of stress. Their study subjects are small guppies. The husbandry occurs under well-defined conditions. In contrast to humans, they are easily subjected to stressful external stimuli. Amber Makovitz is using the greatest stressor for the fish, this black pike cichlid. Guppies are his natural prey. This dummy replaces the predator. It doesn't change, so the stress on the inhabitants is constant. The researchers turn their attention to the gray-colored females carrying their unborn offspring. The big question is how does the stress the mother is experiencing affect her young? To some degree, the most fascinating aspect is to establish whether this is passed on over generations. Can we generate a stress-induced change in one generation and find it again two or three generations later? Stress transferred from parents to offspring. It can be seen in behavior and not just among fish. 
If the mother experiences stress during pregnancy, mostly through domestic violence, there is a higher probability that the child will develop an anxiety disorder or more likely depression, difficulties in regulating emotions, a child that is more impulsive. But how does stress show in the body? Researchers answer this question by looking at the physiology of fish. They want to find out if fish that have been exposed to stress and have behaved anxiously show changes in the brain physiology as the brain regulates behavior. The brain is a key in the sense of looking at maternal stress effects on any type of mental disorder or anxiety or depressive type behaviors in the offspring. So the brain is essentially key. The quest is for certain switches in the brain which regulate the discharge of neurotransmitters. These hormonal switches decide whether stress occurs or not. That's why they are important for potential therapies. Can we flip back the switch? And if so, how? Well, if surrounding conditions can switch it on, we can hope that other conditions can switch it back. At the center of the work, by the two Hector fellows, lies the genetic makeup, which can switch on or off biological and mental changes with so-called methylations. Two angles one interdisciplinary goal. We come from different corners. The psychologists have a more cultural approach in which they assume that they can change people through counseling, which of course works to a certain degree. We have more the genetic point of view with a long-term perspective through generations. And here we share both a common interest and a question. But as I said, from different starting points. This makes the story even more fascinating. If the Hector Fellow Academy project is successful in decoding the genetic basis for stress and traumata, it would be the first step towards an effective psychotherapy. It would not only influence emotions positively, but also the biology of the body. Thomas Elbert's main motive is to help his patients even more effectively. We know that consequences of trauma can be treated with psychotherapy. Fear is reduced, the constant feeling of horror goes away. You don't forget, but it is not ever present. The question is, has the position of the switch been changed? And this is interesting for us, if we change the readability of the genome by psychotherapy. We are optimistic that it works because, after successful treatment, our patients are different people. There is still no proof that trauma therapy changes the genetic makeup permanently, that the switch is reversible. One thing is certain, traumatic experiences are burnt into the workings of the brain. Experiments like this make the trauma visible. When we are confronted with pictures associated with a traumatic experience, they cause a stress reaction even years after the actual event. This is evident in brain waves typical for trauma patients. Thomas Elbert explores the genetic causes of the brain waves in order to treat them with a customized therapy. But can psychological therapy flip back a genetic switch in the brain? Some people call me crazy. They think it's impossible that talking to people and changing behavioral patterns can have an effect on genetic makeup. Think about it. People sleep differently, change their diet, take care of themselves, their metabolism is different. So yes, then it is possible. 
Psychotherapy can achieve all that. It really can. It stops us from taking drugs and helps us to sleep without waking up in fear every night. Die bringt uns dazu, dass wir schlafen können, weil wir nicht jede Nacht vor Angst aufwachen müssen. To understand the potential of psychotherapy and also prove it, the team started a project in Africa, which is supervised by Daniela Konrad as part of her PhD thesis. People in Uganda, traumatized by war, received talk therapy. Together with scientists from the University of Ulm, the experiences and emotions of the affected people are recorded, the basis for later treatment. In addition, saliva samples are taken before and after the therapy. This will show hormonal changes, a novel approach. Studies so far have been limited by a very small sample size. So we're now working with a bigger setup in African samples with special characteristics. For example, all the people examined have a very homogeneous traumatic experience. Their experiences were very similar, good for us, as in earlier studies the patients were not comparable. One aim of this project is to reduce stress in traumatized people by means of a selective therapy. Another aim is to learn the genetic foundation of trauma and stress. This is what the work with fish is for. Researchers want to answer a fundamental question, whether stress can be transferred through the generations via the genetic makeup. The first results show the offspring of stressed, guppy parents stay in the dark, a potential sign of hereditary stress, as the young themselves have never been exposed to any stressor. This first hint might be a scientific milestone. When we stress out the great-grandmother, we can see changes in the behavioral pattern of the great-grandchild, even epigenetic changes, which we don't see in the control group. This is an important question raised by the Hector project, to which we have no answer yet. It would be of fundamental value, independent of the trauma question, a totally important result. Two Hector Academy teams. Together they are asking important questions which they hope to answer in the future. The two Hector Fellows are already providing new impulses for the science of tomorrow. <laughs>